Hello, good morning. So this morning's practice is going to be uh, not quite short and sweet, but um, a little shorter than I've been offering, and perhaps a little more, perhaps a little more predictable for some, uh, including what's here. I am including what is here for me this morning, which is some fatigue, some resistance, some strong desire for things to be different. So I'm including that. And in these uh, times of limited options, in these times of, it's like a big ask, a big ask of the universe, a big ask of uh, the people around us, a big ask of our communities to um, do what's most helpful for the most beings. And so individual wills and desires are less important now. And uh, for the spiritual practitioner, this means that we rally, we rally even when we don't want to. So for me this morning, that means um, getting myself on my mat, even though I'd rather just crawl back in bed and allowing the work I've done, the foundations I've laid, the insights I've had to support me now. So I invite you to do that for yourself. Any progress you feel you've made along this path, not only physically strength and endurance and malleability of body, but strength, endurance, and malleability of heart, and strength and endurance and malleability of mind. Call that up and let that support you now. We're gonna start in child's pose. Oh, and for practice, uh, I'm keeping it pretty bare bones, so probably just a couple of blocks for many of you. Not everyone will need them. <clears throat> Although I, I might use them um, not so much for necessity, but for some enhancement. <clears throat> Starting in child's pose, and... Um, if it works to have your knees together-ish, go for that. And when you sit onto your heels, maybe tuck them in towards each other. That creates a slightly different shift in the alignment of the ankles and feet. And I recommend to start to have sort of down dog arms so you can keep nudging the weight back into the feet and hips. And for some, it might take you a while to get down there. So enjoy the journey, feel into it. I'm wobbling a little right and left with my hips. And this shape puts a lot of expansiveness in the back body, back torso specifically. And so send the breath backwards into the back body. Every once in a while, if it works, breathe in a little draft, uplift under the torso and wave it forward, lengthening it forward and lay it back down. This will put a little more tug around the glutes, a little more fold, a little more pressure in the front of the hips and a little more length in your spine. Slide the right hand back by the right leg. Place it on the floor to the outside of the right leg. And then slide the left arm over to the right so you're on a diagonal. Can you drop the left side ribs more into the space between the legs? I think a 
to spin left palm to face the sky some and let the head drip down like pour the top of the head down towards the floor over that left shoulder so a little twist in the spine and a little side bend and you can nudge in that direction after a few breaths or so get a little more reach get a little more wrap get a little more winding up to the right And bring yourself back to the center. If you need a respite, come on up to simply sitting on your heels. If your knees and heels let you take a breath, maybe sweep the arms up. Interlace, point the index fingers up, reach up, maybe look up, back arch. And then down we go again. Straight down the middle, legs still right together. And then take your time to slide your left hand towards the outer left shin. Pick the torso up and sweep the right arm across over to the left. And then add a twist, try to send the right side ribs down in between the two legs. There's not much space there, but try to tuck them in let the head hang over the right arm if it lets right shoulder and the neck let you. Be as draped and drippy and soft as possible. Be as receptive and breathful as possible. Then back to center, this time hands and knees, cats and cows. Feed the breath in, and if you inhale cow and exhale cat, that's fine and beautiful and understandable. You could do the opposite, you can inhale cat. And exhale, cow. See what's there for you. Or both. I do a full breath in each one. And I invite you to look for the deep front gathering in the cat. Deep front, wide back. Maybe you've heard me say that before. The depth of how the front body goes into the back body. Can you keep a feeling of that, a felt sense of that when you go into your cow? So even in a back bend, the front of you feels deep and gathered and set well back. The way a yogi might snug into a, a cape, right? Old school yogi meditation caves. So you snug back into yourself and stay seated there even when the energy goes forward and out. Tuck your ten toes, down dog. I'm going to kick the two heels towards each other like a first position in ballet and swing my hips right and left. So I'm getting a little ankle juju here. One ankle gets to do a deep flexion, knee pointing more or less in the same direction as the toes. And then parallel your feet at some point. 
shorten your dog, walking your hands back a little bit and deepen the ankle flexion, so a little knee bend. We're gonna slowly work this into a squat, and so some of you would be wise to grab your block and set it between your two feet. As we take this more to like a sort of squatting dog kind of thing, hands are forward, knees and hips and ankles are fully flexed. I'm gonna disappear off the screen here a little bit. Um, eventually, as your hips and ankles and knees let you, you fold yourself into a squat. A trick you can use is to grab the sides of your mat and shove your mat forward as you sit down into your heels if you need that. Otherwise, if you're self-sufficient in your squat or maybe you got a block under your bum, Second side, flat side, so you've got some support in the heels, maybe aren't all the way down. But allow yourself a moment here of folding into the hips in a deep way. Tell most of, most of the rest of the world goes poop. There's not too many countries in the world that have so much clean water that we shit in it. It's a little embarrassing, actually, if you ask me. But nevertheless, this position is a helpful move, says the story of yoga, for downward moving energy, for grounding, for releasing for rooting, for pooping, for childbirthing, whatever it is. So allow yourself a moment here to drop, to release. And there's this subtle way that we could work with pelvic floor, deep pelvic musculature. There's a lot of pressure down there now. You could try to sort of gather that musculature up, draw up through the ovaries or the loop of the vas deferens if you're in a male body. Pull up the small intestines, reach up through the top of the head. One more moment. And as you reach forward, take your hands all the way forward to plank pose. Plank pose. And um, gather the shoulder blades onto the back ribs so they feel flush there really snugly into the back ribs, a lot of lift in the belly, super strong thighs. And about five or so micro push-ups for three, two, one. As you straighten your arms, bend your knees, push back to sort of a crouching dog. Could look forward actually, and then spring forward to a few micro push-ups. Swing the hips back, crouching dog, load the legs, load and spring. Micro push-ups. And then load. One more. Down dog. And then take your time in your down dog to slowly walk your feet forward. Let the head be heavy, swivel the hips, point and flex the feet, bend and straighten the knees. And when your feet get all the way up to your hands, feel free to Dangle here, bend your knees or not, and maybe if you can, interlacing hands behind, behind the hips and shooting the knuckles up to the ceiling. Now, if it's really hard for you to interlace your hands, you could grab a belt and hang on to it, or simply 
reach your arms to the ceiling behind you and try to squeeze them towards each other. So use the muscles that you got to get any movement that's there by way of the muscles alone. So catching the belts nice sometimes, doing whatever weird things you have to do to get your hands interlaced is nice sometimes. And sometimes it's nice just to work with what you got. So we can all de-interlace or uninterlace the hands and reach the arms back and up, try to squeeze the hands towards each other. For a few more moments here, I'm gonna slowly, keeping the hands doing that thing, start to bend the knees and build a real slow utkatasana. So knees bend, hips drop, and then rolling the spine up, arms trying to squeeze and reach back still. And eventually sweep them forward and up. And can you keep the hips down and the tail forward and then pull the heart and your face up. Big breath in. Little version of some salutes. Sweep arms out and back. If you can, interlace. If not, just reach for ceiling. And then if you can, again, keep hands back. Step your left foot back. A lunge with the arms swept back, whether they're interlaced or not. <clears throat> keep arms back, whether they're interlaced or not. Knee drop, lunge, left knee flirts with touching the floor, but no touching. Stay low in your right hip, straighten that leg, left leg, right knee still bent. And then sweep your arms up, look up, go up, breathe up, and then as hands come down, down dog, or you can do your flow. I'm gonna come all the way to belly down. Building from locust to cobra to up dog. Back to down dog. One more time to take the slow swishy walk and the rest of the movements, the option to float or hop or run or crawl. <laughs> Feet to the hands. Look forward, heart forward, lean forward, breathe in. And as you fold in, sweep the arms back and up to the ceiling. Whether they interlace or not doesn't matter. Work the muscles either way. Bend the knees. Utkatasana, with a slow sweep of the arms up. Rise all the way up with the reach of the hands, the reach of your face, and then swan dive as you go down. Hands sweep behind and either reach or interlace. And all the weight in the left foot, easy, slow right foot steps back. Keep arms back. Really scoop your left sit bone under. Gather your left glute muscles under. Right knee drop. Not landing on the floor, but maybe touching it. Stay real low and straighten that leg. Back leg, right leg, sweep arms up. through both dogs or just one dog or cat cows or belly down back bends of whatever whatever your preference is back to your down dog Bottom of the exhale, feet to hands, and you can travel by land or by air. Fold into the forward bend, sweep the arms back whether you interlace or not. Work the back of the arms. Bend the knees, 
Torso up, Utka with arms back. And then Utka with arms forward and up. And then rising up, neutralize your gaze. I'm gonna face the camera, hands overhead, fingers interlaced, index finger long. Go up and then over to the right, but slowly. So like as if the left humerus, the upper arm bone could be like the apex and then maybe left shoulder blade could be like the apex even if only in your mind. Clearly my left shoulder blade is not higher than my hands, but in my mind it is. I'm reaching up and then left side ribs, like trying to be the highest point, as if you're standing in an arched doorway. You're trying to sort of slither your way up and over. Come back through center. Whatever breather you need, you can release the arms, right? And then go to the other side. So again, as if you're sliding, slithering up and along an arched doorway. So not so much about shortening the left side here, but more about lengthening the right side. With the support of the left side, they're not inseparable. They're constantly in relationship, just like we are with our environment, whether we're doing it knowingly or not. Weight in the heels, don't let the belly blast. Keep your deep front. No belly blasting. Up you come. You're still at the top of the mat in theory. Swan dive forward. This time hands stay down. Step your left leg back and spin the left heel down to the floor. So now the hips are turned open. The legs are moving away from each other. <clears throat> Let's windmill, keeping right knee bent. So get your legs set. Windmill up to Virabhadras in the two, and let the left hand land on the left thigh, and the right arm goes to the sky. Feel into and create as much length in your right side as possible. Keep it long. And as you keep it long, side bend over that right thigh, catching right ankle, and left arm sweeps all the way along the side of your head. Now left side's long. Reach right knee and inner left thigh away from each other and lift the left arch, lift the left inner ankle. One more breath, two more breaths. And as you bring your left hand down, the option is here to come to the outer left foot and step the right foot back into a side plank. It's a big up level option. <laughs> Take it or leave it. And then I'm curious here about um, that depth of front being like a support beam of sorts to bring the right hand and the right foot to the floor at the same time. So the whole right side comes over and down at once. That's hard. Go through your thing in the middle, whether it's a vinyasa flow, both dogs, maybe cat, cow, maybe you just sit on your heels and pause. <sighs> Meeting and down dog. And from here, Stepping left foot forward. Pause and spin that right heel down to the ground in line with left heel. Now the hips are turning open. Let them. Keep your legs set. Get that left sit bone under. Legs, in theory, are ready to support you as you windmill up 
to warrior two, in theory, there's nothing different that you had to do with your legs. Right hand on right thigh, left arm to sky. Go for it, go for the sky, but don't lose your ground, right? So it's very descriptive of our practice. We can go into the eth ethereal realms, the ineffable places, while staying right here on the ground. Very much present with what is. Side angle, left hand down, but open to all the possibilities. Open to the infinite, but firmly present in the finite. Heaven and earth, finite and infinite. From side angle, come to right hand down, ball mounds of right foot. And here's your choice to either step back and go to symmetry or to bring the left leg on top of the right leg and pause in a side plank. Your exit from side plank, that experience of a really wide back, a really deep front, to land left hand and left foot at the same time. And then through whatever you wanna do in the middle here. I'm choosing down dog and then toe pose. I'm gonna pause. Now feel what's up, what's up, both physically, maybe breath, heart rate, emotionally, right? So check in with what is here and if you're bypassing or suppressing or overriding, or if you need to take a pause and let some stuff uh, really be present and center. We'll meet at the top of the mat. You can travel by land or by air. And this time, come rolling on up. Sweep the arms up. And as you slide hands through prayer, keep the right toes pointing straight ahead as they are, but step your left foot back into the left. Wide stance. I'm gonna turn around so you can see. Both hands interlaced on the left hip. Soften your two knees. And sensing the relationship between right thigh moving straight and bent and the pelvis swinging right and left, and then the torso's relationship to the pelvis. So if you start with both knees real soft, and you start to swing the right knee into straight, swing the right sit bone forward, and towards your right big toe. Let this pour you into a side bend. In theory, both hands are still on the left hip. If you need the support, bring the right hand down. Before the right leg goes fully straight, squeeze the two thigh bones towards each other. That's gonna be part of straightening your right leg. And catch the support, right hand on wrist, and then take your time to straighten your left leg. And as you do so, Heavy more outer left heel, more outer left heel, and lengthen more inner right thigh. Left arm to sky maybe. Both hands down. Come on to ball mound of left foot, waggle right foot a little more to the right than usual. Both hands to the inside of that right foot and play with left leg straight, right leg holding the floor down, really pushing the floor down, but letting the torso soften towards the floor. Anyways, so right foot sort of the calibrator how much you lower down is up to that right foot, sort of holding the floor down and giving some in the hip. And then from here, look forward, heart forward. Reach your right arm forward and up, and then pull yourself up to stand on that right leg. Top of the mat, sweep your arms up. Maybe go tiptoe. If it feels good, 
and is available. I wish I could touch the ceiling. I'm kind of close. Hands to prayer. Step your right foot now back into the right. Same beginning, same ending. I'm going to switch around so you can see again. Both hands interlaced <clears throat> on the outer front right hip. Soften your knees. Explore left foot sort of pushing the floor away. The floor is not going to move, but your hips will. <clears throat> and then pull the floor back under you, bending left knee. Do that a couple of times and feel the swing of the pelvis. Left sit bone scoops under and forward, left hand to left ankle. Or not yet, you decide how long you want to linger. Working torso strength without left hand support or using left hand support. And then bend right, mm -mm, straighten, straighten, slowly straighten, 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 straighten. And look for length in the hip, front right hip. Right arm up. Lengthen left groin. Another couple of rounds of breath. Before you take this into that lizardy kind of lunge where both hands come down and come onto ball mound of right foot, waggle left foot to the left. Both hands to the inside of the left foot. Left foot super strong, really pushing the floor away. So what lowers the hips down is not that you stop pushing the floor away, but you soften the resistance. So you keep holding the floor down with the left leg, but you left the fibers of your left bum lengthen. They're working and lengthening, working and lengthening, working and lengthening. If you can get elbows down, go for that. And then stepping left leg back to elbow dog. Elbow dog. So maybe you just step back to down dog and then come to hands and knees and bring your elbows down. So working a little bit the upper arms, the underside of the armpits, tricep. So fingertips point to the ceiling. I mean, they can't point exactly to the ceiling, but can you make the outer wrist heavy? And stream your fingertips towards the ceiling a little bit. That helps to lengthen the pinky side of the arms, which will help to Wrap the shoulder blades around the side ribs and bring the inferior tip, the bottom tip of the shoulder blades wide. Stay here if you can. Left leg up. As high as it can go without turning the hips. Bending the right knee helps. Way up on right tiptoes helps. One more breath. Before you switch legs. So left leg goes up, straight up, don't turn the hips out, keep the left ovary elevated, left ovary ascending, left knee can bend a lot, left toes, you're on the toe tips or ball mounds, and then from here, right leg comes down, elbow plank, elbow plank, hold it here, or from the ball mound, swing to the outer right and inner left foot. So you swing or swivel the hips and then up and over to the other side. So hips swiveling, elbow plank. Minimize how much right to left the hips go and try to spiral, spin them. So can you get that outer hip to sort of swing under Try to feel the movement all the way up the spine, not just in one or two places. Back to center, knees down, hips down, belly down. Extend the toes back, sweep the arms back, locust. Thumbs now trying to be the longest. So reach the thumb tips back the furthest. 
I don't care whether hands, palms are facing down or facing in. Let the thumb tip lead. I mean, it's the shortest, but reach it more than the others. And then as you're ready, hands down, maybe up dog, and then for sure down dog. forward, spin the left heel flat. Here's where you might want your blocks. Straighten the right leg. <clears throat> Parjvottanasana, which some people call pyramid, side front bend. Can you really get on the inner edge of your front foot? Big toe mound heavy, right? But you don't lose the outer edge. So you got your three points of the foot, three corners, finger quotes around corners. But big toe bomb mound really is sort of spearheading this effort. And then the outer left heel, outer left heel is really, really, really heavy. So it's easy to get the ball mound down in the back foot, but not the outer foot. Go for the outer foot. In the front, it's easy to get the inner, rather the outer foot down, but you gotta go for the inner. So often we have to cultivate the hardest parts, the missing links. Find your twist. Left hand can be to the outside of the right foot or to the inside. Can be on a block. Really scissor the inner thighs. And if you can get that left hand to plunge down, pile drive down into the earth or the block, that's gonna give you a little bit better chance of stacking the shoulders, and then maybe, this maybe, right arm can go up. That's a tough one. Oh, we didn't step up out of our lunge from the left side, did we? Whoops. From here, can you windmill to a Vero one? Left arm leads the way, right knee bends, up you come. Virabhadrasana one, stay low on the front leg, really sit down in that right hamstring. Do your best to pull the left hip forward and down, forward and down. One more moment, maybe two or three more, because it's so lovely if you ask me. We're going to step forward from here. So come on to ball mounds of left foot. Bring it all together at the top of the mat. Don't worry, I won't forget that on side two. And find your stuff in the middle here, whether it's a full dog cycle that supports you, or simply bowing down and dangling in your forward bend. We'll meet in down dog. Left foot steps forward, spin right heel flat. Your blocks are still there in theory. Grab them if you need them. Straighten your left leg and turn your right hip towards it. <clears throat> Commit to the outer left foot staying heavy, but pin that right mm -mm, left big toe ball mound down. And commit to the right big toe mound staying heavy, but then wrap, engage outer right foot down to lift this whole inner leg. Spend as much time on the forward bend as you like before you twist it. The right hand can be the inside of the left foot or on top of, that's a little harder actually, to the outside of the left foot's more typical and it's a suggestion of how far that shoulder has to wrap so really shove the floor or the block down with that right hand and spread left chest away from it maybe just maybe there's freedom for the left arm to go up if not you got to cultivate it you got to build the inroads to freedom both psychologically Physically, 
Windmill into Virabhadrasana one, so as the right hand comes up, bend into your left knee. Left hand meets the right arm. Pause in Virabhadrasana one. And then stepping forward onto that left foot, meaning the top of the mountain, pause and rest, or go through your two dogs. <clears throat> so I was reluctant, I was reluctant to go through my two dogs, but here I go. From here, from down dog, bend your two knees so you're in a little bit of a crouched position. Elbows are soft. And if you pick up the right hand and the left foot and come to the sole of the right foot so you're in the sideways crouching thing. And back of right hand and outer left knee sort of meet to give you some guidance and step that left foot through. So you end up in like a three-legged reverse tabletop. And the hand and opposite leg merging is just a stability factor. So you step that left foot back under, back to your crouching dog. Outer left hand meets the outer right knee. Give them a point of contact to help stabilize. As you spin on left foot, step the right leg through to this three-legged uh, tabletop and then come back under and go to the first side. You don't have to step the left foot down if you don't want to. You can make it a two-legged topsy-turvy balancing act for twists and for deep strength. Slow and steady wins the race. Right? I mean, unless you're a liar and a cheater. Oh, but I'm talking about someone else. Sorry. That was supposed to be a joke, but not really. <laughs> it's last side, second time. Or it's last side, second side, last time. And then knees down. Pause. Pause. Catch your two blocks. Come to sit on your bum and have your two blocks next to you, flat side on the ground by your hips. <clears throat> boat pose. So boat pose, legs in theory are straight, although you could have them bent. And your arms are like little oars. Not that you have to move them like oars, but there they are. Really firm in the thighs, really strong in the belly. So you got your handy blocks next to you. Don't let your feet touch the floor, but cross the ankles, pull them in. And then you can do hands on blocks, keep feet up, curl the toes in, suction the arches of the feet up, and lift your butt off the ground, and then replace and boat pose. We're going to repeat this a few times. So you cross the other shin in front. You could do the harder route, no blocks. I'm using all the supports I can get today. <laughs> Let's say three more. So a total of six, I think. And switch the cross of the feet each time. Two more. Oh my God, last one. Okay. <laughs> Come 
to lay on your belly. I'm actually going to stack or align my two blocks side by side, flat side, to lay in Sphinx pose because I want more belly opening, more belly spreader. So elbows on blocks if you're using them, you don't need blocks. Could elbow, have elbows right on the floor. My front ribs are on my blocks as well, little uh, edge of the solar plexus touching up on the blocks. And so you're welcome to, that was my dog that you can't see. This is right there, he's snorting. <laughs> um, you can just stay here, right? Just chill here. Uh, it feels lovely, I'm tempted to do that myself. I'm gonna let the abdomen open a little bit more. Simply muscularly reorganize the legs by engaging. Let's do left leg first, left hamstring, and drawing. Lay down, Lucky. Lay down. Lay down. And draw left heel, left heel towards your own left bum. Lay down. And then maybe, maybe it's within reach. You can reach back with your left hand and grab it. So I've spun my right forearm, so the whole forearm is on the blocks. Could lose the blocks, of course. I'm just getting a little extra left thigh lengthener because I really want it. So make your pubic bone heavy, pubic bone heavy. And if you could reach through your kneecap, if you could reach the length of your leg bone through your kneecap and let that invite a little more spreading, elongating along the thigh muscles. Another breath or two. When you release the leg, don't do what I did. Don't let it like slingshot back. Try to control the release. Reorganize yourself on your blocks. Both legs real straight. Push tops of feet down. Lift long, like updraft through the belly viscera. And then, um, Left forearm can spin parallel to the top of your mat. Use hamstring to bring the heel in, right heel to bum, and then maybe it's within reach. And if you can catch it, invite it towards your right bum any amount. No knee pain, no shoulder pain, no pain ever in this practice, which is not to say you will not encounter discomfort, like discomfort is inevitable. Pain is too much pushing in this context, too much attachment to something in this context that we can't just abide by our perceived temporary limitations. Right? When we need something more, something bigger, we can't stand it, so we hurt ourselves. That's not yogic. That's like performance. No thank you. Oh boy, okay, so reach through that right kneecap. Reach through the length of the thigh bone as if your knee was not bent, right? Reach through that leg. And then when you're ready to release, do so lovingly, gingerly. <clears throat> and I'm gonna keep the blocks here, tucking them under a little bit more. Solar plexus on the blocks, bend both knees. Catch both ankles, bridge pose. No, that's not bridge pose. <laughs> that's bow pose. And then lift your sternum up. Try to reach up through the top of the head. Reach up through the roof of the mouth. Reach up through your tonsils. So bring, bring the back of the throat up with you. Don't collapse back into it. One more, two more moments. Enjoy as best as you can, endure as best as you can. And then my exit strategy here is to place hands by blocks, 
up to plank, back to hands on blocks dog. So I just catch one hand on each block, spin the blocks. So then now I can get a little bit more power driving down through my legs. Come to laying on your back. Keep a block close in hand. Bridge pose. But before you jump right in, if you organize the legs feet hip width and have your feet more or less under the knees, that might change. Arms alongside your bod. And I like to teach bridge in the following way. I know many of you have done it with me. So if you reach the knees away from you, that will send the knees forward of the toes. If it hurts, don't do it. But it turns the hamstrings on and pulls your hips up. So you could do that a couple of times. Relax the hips back down, soften the knee reach, and then reach the knees straight ahead. Hamstrings are turned on the more you reach the knees. Keep reaching, reaching, reaching. Feel the backs of the legs gathering, gathering. And then if you push, if you push the feet into the mat, try to shove the mat in that direction, then that sends the hips up, turns your thighs on. So knees reach, it pulls your hamstrings on. I'm gonna shorten the distance between my shoulders and my feet. And then push the mat away, turns the thighs on. And you slowly sort of tick tock the hips higher and higher and higher. And maybe, just maybe, you get enough height, even if you have to come onto tiptoes, to put the block under your pelvis. Block can be on its tall side, that's where I've got it. Could be on its second or even flat side. But under your pelvis, right? Not in your lumbar, I got mine right on my sacrum. Depending on how your block is set up, you may just have arms down beside you if your block is wide. If your block is narrow, on its narrow side, you can interlace your hands, shoulders to the floor and back of head. Ideally, no spine is on the floor, no part of your neck, no part of your vertebra are on the floor. Shoulders and head like a little tripod. From here, if your hamstrings let you, legs up, one leg at a time maybe. So a supported inversion. Belly ideally is soft and receptive. There's definitely some deep front engagement. But you don't have to harden the belly. You're not holding yourself up here by your belly. The pelvis is landed squarely on the block and so the spine just cascades down to the next support which is shoulders and head so you've draped your spine on two levels the block and the floor with your legs straight up those of you with some chops you could play with one leg going long and out towards the floor If you keep the down leg internally rotated, big toe ball mound is like the most committed, you might feel some work deep, deep, deep in the glute, but it's not going to be your big butt cheek glute max gripping because that, that's not skillful here. We use that muscle in other ways, in other places, other moves, other shapes. Right now it's the deep rotators and the surface glutes are receptive. Now the upper leg, upper leg might have some glute engagement. Go for that, but not in the lower leg. When you're ready to switch, you switch. Uh, inner edge of the down leg is the heaviest. It's a pronated foot. The glute is not 
gripped rock hard in the lower leg, but go ahead, give it a squeeze on the upper leg. Can you do that? Can you squeeze one butt cheek? <laughs> Very advanced practice. So you'll finish either with both legs up or both legs down. Finish this shape. We're going to do one more thing. One more thing. One more thing today. So when it's time to pull the block out, press the heels down firmly. Pluck the block out. And then when you land, don't roll your spine down. I don't recommend that coming out of this. But stick your butt out, let your pelvis touch first. Keep the back bend in short, and then go neutral here. Go neutral here. No effort, let your knees knock together. Now many of you might be like, yep, all set, namaste. And you can stretch your legs out and rest. Others of you might feel the urge to hug your knees in. If you have any back residue that needs cleansed, go for that. Or <clears throat> two other options. You can sit up and do a forward bend here, which is not gonna be my choice. My choice. So Paschimottanasana, either sitting or inverted. Supine Paschimo. So here's where a belt might be necessary, which I didn't say you would need. Sorry. So you could uh, fish around for a belt or some people don't need it. And starting with the spine pretty flat on the floor and focusing most of the movement here in the hip joint. So if your pelvis is on the floor, it's all hip joint. Legs so straight, but if, if you can, so dive the navel towards your tail. So there's this energy of belly flesh going towards where your sacrum is. Keep that. And if you pull your legs towards you, the back of the pelvis will start to peel off the floor. If you keep the belly hollow and deep and navel towards tail, you're gonna maximize the length in both front and back body as you pull the shins closer and closer to your face. More of your spine is peeling off the floor, but you're not turning into like a round turtle shell back. You're trying to stay as long as you can, front body, back body. So it's Sutta Paschimottanasana for as long as you wish it. Now there is a tendency here for the tail, the hips to fish tail, depending on back muscles. And this is not feedback you get when you do it sitting. Feedback you get when you do it sitting is basically gravity just has us however we tend to be. But now we have a little different relationship. And so I'm feeling the need to swing my tail one way to accommodate some tightness in my back. It's quite informative and lovely. Stay as long as you like. And eventually when you're ready, You can release the legs, release the arms, whatever extra moving, pausing, squiggling you wish to do before you come into Shavasana. And before you come all the way into Shavasana, let me offer one more thing. Uh, I call this bone bouncing technique. I'm borrowing it from OTs and PTs who work with children with sensory integration disorder. And this bone bouncing technique is said to release uh, serotonin. So the feel good hormone, I say yes. So from here, with arms straight up in the air, lift and drop your shoulders. Lift and flop and drop and plop your shoulders on the ground for five more. Three, two, and one. And then elbows. Elbows drop and plop and flop the elbows. Bonkity bonk, bonk your bones. 
and then the hands flop and flap and flippity flappers your hands. And then with feet still on the floor, knees bent, thump your sacrum, thump, 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 thump your sacrum. Just sort of pound the back of the sacrum lovingly into the floor. And then from here, the legs go long and then bounce and flap and flop your legs. Bum, 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 bum. For 10 and 9 and 8 and 7, 6, maybe add the arms. 4, 3, 2, and nothing. You can feel the tingle. Feel the flutter. Feel the prana. And let your mind rest with that feeling state. For me right now, pretty clearly on the surface, surface of myself. And follow that feeling in, as it settles, like snow globe asana. You shake it up, set it down, let the particles settle. Let the breath relax. And I invite you to do a couple more tiny, tiny little adjustments thought to increase vagal tone. So what's it like to relax the eyes and maybe gladden them? A little internal smile. Nothing overly muscular, just a gesture of sweetness in the face. And deepen, deepen your breathing. Just for a moment, feel the breath touch into the belly. And then eventually letting all that go. No effort, no intention other than letting go and go and go. And may we all cultivate the bandwidth to let go of the inconsequential pangs of want, don't want. And may we all let go ever deeper into the reality of our situation, the down on the ground truth. of what much of the world is enduring. And may we all let go ever deeper into our deeper being of kindness and love and presence. And may it be so. Thank you, I love you.